In this video, let's take a closer look at Azure Cosmos DB's Server-Side Programmability API. The Server-Side Programmability API enables you to register a unit of business logic written in JavaScript to be executed from directly within the database engine itself. This, this API uh, can be used to implement user-defined functions, store procedures, and triggers. The user-defined functions allows you to extend the SQL query API so that you can write a uh, set of arbitrary read-only JavaScript to extend a select clause or where clause as part of a SQL query. And the store procedures and triggers are your mechanisms for performing transactions over multiple records in Cosmos DB within the scope of a partition key. This is a rather interesting concept because uh, what we have seen is most distributed databases do not give you uh, transactional semantics over multiple records. And uh, if you're building applications, what you found is uh, not having multi-record transactions makes application development rather difficult. So what Azure Cosmos DB has done is it has brought back uh, multi-record transactions, but it scopes it within a partition key so that you can avoid some of the steep trade-offs in terms of performance uh, that are associated with distributed transactions. Now, uh, let's take a look at an example uh, how this can be leveraged. And what I have here is a container that is uh, it holds records for a game in which I have multiple uh, game player records. And re what I have here is I have a record uh, that is a player uh, whose ID is Ralph. He is a level 40 warrior, and he has an inventory of items in which he has an iron sword. We have another record that is Heather. She is a level 40 druid, and in her inventory, she has a diamond pickaxe. And in this scenario, what Ralph and Heather would like to do is they would like to trade their items. They would like to uh, swap their inventories. Now, in the absence of multi-record transactions, if I were to read both of these records, uh, perform a swap, and persist this back in the database, if at any time, let's say, a fault or an exception occurs, uh, what uh, could potentially, some of the bad things that could potentially happen is I might end up duplicating uh, a item, or even worse, I might lose an item. And so uh, this is where store procedures come in, in which I can implement uh, this unit of business logic in the form of a store procedure. And the, how the store procedure will work is uh, if a store procedure runs successfully to completion, all of the uh, right operations are going to be committed in an, uh, 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 an all or none fashion. And if at any point I want to fail, uh, the transaction or roll back the transaction due to some data validation issues or some other issues, what I can do is I can simply throw an exception and all of the right operations from within the script will be automatically rolled back. So let's take a look at this script. Uh, what I do here is uh, we're going to query for each of the individual player records, which will be passed in through an input parameter. And then we're going to call a swap function in which we're going to uh, perform the swap and persist this back into the database. So let's take a look at the query function here. And an in interesting thing to note here is that we actually have two different query APIs that we can leverage. We have the SQL query API that you are probably already familiar with. We also have a JavaScript language integrated query so that if you want to write fluent uh, JavaScript queries, uh, you can do so uh, using a familiar API that looks a lot like e, uh, ES6 array built-ins. And here what we're doing is uh, we have a query that uh, basically has a filter on a player ID. So we call filter and we filter on the player ID and this will be automatically uh, optimized to run on the Cosmos DB index. From here we're going to call the callback which is the swap items function and within the swap items function we're going to perform a swap and then we're going to call replace document to uh, persist these records back into the database. We're going to manage this control flow using the form uh, using callbacks, 
and at the end of the uh, function we're going to set a response body to return what are the uh, the new states of each of the player records. Now there's a few things I want to point out in terms of best practices for writing a stored procedure. Uh, first of all, stored procedures uh, in all scripts in Cosmos DB have bounded execution. Uh, there are bounds in terms of the physical resources a script uh, can consume, as well as an amount of time the script must uh, complete execution within. And this is uh, intended to prevent malicious activity so that uh, because Cosmos DB is a multi-tenant service, what we do not want to have happen is someone uploading a malicious script that affects the performance and causes noisy neighbor problems for our other tenants. Now, uh, the nice thing is you are well safeguarded against this. Azure Cosmos DB implements resource governance throughout its stack, including the server-side programmability API, and um, it tightly governs the execution bounds for each of these scripts. What this means in terms of writing a script is you need to make sure that you honor these execution bounds, or else if it repeatedly uh, runs against, uh, exceeds these bounds, uh, that script will be blacklisted. And uh, to ease programmability in this space, what happens is each of the CRUD API um, uh, methods, what it'll do is it'll return a is accepted return value. And if the value is true, it means that uh, this operation, this uh, CRUD operation is expected to complete successfully. If it returns false, then that means uh, you are nearing, or rather the script is nearing execution bounds and it should uh, uh, basically wrap up execution and uh, kick out. And so you can use this is, uh, is accepted boolean from the CRUD API as a means of building a continuation model. Uh, so if you have a long running uh, transaction, what you can do is you can break it up into small sub transactions in which uh, you return the state uh, back to the caller and you use this to implement continuation so that the caller then knows uh, it has a signal to make follow-up calls and pass some stateful information back in as an input parameter for uh, another invocation of the script. Now because there's an execution bound here uh, both in terms of time as well as in terms of system resources uh, you'll want to be uh, you want to make sure that you avoid having, uh, avoid spending these system resources uh, and, and, and paying for overhead that is unnecessary. And so one of the things that you want to watch for is avoid deserializing inputs if it's not needed. What I mean by this is, let's say you have a script that takes an input document as a string, and what you do is you call JSON parse to turn this string into a object, and then you call create document on this object. Because we don't actually do any operations on this object, uh, this operation incurs some overhead in terms of compute without really bringing any value. And in this case, what you can do is you can actually pass the input string directly to the CRUD API and uh, skip paying this overhead. Another thing that you'll want to pay attention to is once uh, a script hits uh, the execution bounds, then uh, it must uh, wrap up execution quickly and uh, terminate. And anything left on the event loop in terms of queued up asynchronous uh, operations, uh, those may not complete successfully. So uh, as per standard JavaScript com uh, convention, you'll want to manage the control flow for all of these asynchronous op uh, operations through the use of callbacks. And so uh, for an example of a pattern that you want to avoid, let's say we have a input parameter that passes in an array of records. What you want to avoid doing is queuing up a large number of create document calls on the event loop uh, in which you're uh, in a tight loop uh, calling uh, a bunch of asynchronous uh, CRUD API methods. Instead of doing this, uh, the right model is you manage the control flow such that uh, given this array, you uh, call create document, and then in the callback, you process the next document and create that. And this allows you to now build a continuation model so that 
if let's say you want to create a million documents and within this script uh, invocation we can uh, persist the first 10,000 uh, when is accepted is false what you can do is you can uh, pass back to the caller saying hey the first 10,000 have been persisted so upon next uh, invocation uh, start at item 10,001 and this is how you can build a continuation model uh, on, on top of these store procedures. Uh, this concludes a quick rundown of the Cosmos DB server-side programmability API. Thank you for watching.